Oh, here we go. This is what we got. A little bit of a tight fit on that door. That's a good thing. Here we go. This is it. This is actually a mixed load, but everything is about the same in dryness or moisture content, I should say. So these ropes right here, I just pull these down and it lifts the, uh, the baffles there up and out of the way. And yeah, this is a buttload of lumber. This stack is five feet wide and actually it is 19 and a half feet long. I got it right up to the door. You can see there. It's not perfectly up against it. I'm going to get some airflow, but for the most part, I only have an inch or two through there. Um, but I believe up to this level right here, where my uh, flashlight is shining on right there, believe that is 31 rows and those 31 rows are five feet wide 19 and a half feet long and all of my lumber is melted inch and an eighth so with all that calculated in there each row is 109 board feet not take you on the other side so at 109 board feet you do the math um The, yeah, each row is 109 board feet. I, I had some cherry, so I just stuck that up on top up there. And, but the, this down here, better than half of it is oak. Uh, what's on top up here is maple. And the oak was at, actually the oaks are white oak and red oak. The white oak is 19.8. And the red oak was 24%. The maple was 21%. And the cherry up on top there was 17%. So with all that being said, um, going into the kiln schedules, what I will be setting this at is, uh, I believe, actually, let's just go look at it. There's a couple different ways to do this, and I got this uh, set up on my tablet right there. I want to show you how noisy this thing is in there and how quiet it gets once I close the doors. But on the Niles handbook, they have this uh, kiln schedules. So what we are dealing with here is a group three lumber at 25% moisture. So I'll be setting the uh, dry bulb and wet bulb according to this. And there's another thing. Actually, I will go ahead and show you on the tablet here. It's something online. It is a book and let me find it. Come on. It's a dry kiln operator's manual. And this book is online. When you click on each one of these uh, links here, it takes you to a PDF and you can download it. So what I have downloaded is that one right there, Chapter 7, the Kiln Schedules. So I will include a link to this in the, com in the description down below. And this is what I could be doing, but I'm not. Just my first time firing this thing up, I'm going to do it like Niall says to do it. This here is basically a bit more aggressive 
for the oak at that moisture content. So that's one reason why I'm going to do it according to the Nile handbook. But you can see here the white oak and the red oak. They are the T4. They're both at T4. Um, that is the dry bulb. And the wet bulb is the one right next to it, which the white oak is the C2. And the red oak is D2. So we come down below here. Two, there's red oak and white oak, huh? Right on top. So we are at 25% moisture right there, and it's telling me to have the dry bulb at 130. The Nile book is saying 120. So I'm just going to go by the Nile book, and uh, as that thing uh, starts getting down lower and lower, I will adjust it accordingly. And, uh, but that's where we are. And I, when I fire this thing up, I'll show you, uh, we'll go through setting the controller there and there you have it. So let's, let's go back to this sound meter here. Yeah, this is exactly kind of amazing. Okay, at dead quiet, 28. And here it goes with the fans. Okay, there's just one fan. Okay, there's just the fans alone. I feel the wind out here because it wants to blow through the doors. Now here goes the kiln unit. Okay, there we are at 90. Yeah. So now let's close these doors. One door closed. And there's the second door closed. So there we are at 70. Just above speech. Now let's go outside. Take this with us. Close this door. Now right outside. This thing is super quiet out here. I am absolutely amazed by how quiet this thing is. That was because of the Yeah, that was because of the um rock wool that I put in here. Okay, now we got, actually I'm going to have to refer to the manual on some of this because I don't remember exactly how we get into the setup. So, I'm going to find that in the manual and we'll be right back. Okay guys, after I got my memory refreshed there, I remembered how simple this was. 
Um, but one other thing I wanted to show you was energy usage of this thing. So what I have here is the uh, screen of the sense energy monitor. So I have this fire that this connected to the breaker box in my barn, which feeds in here. The breaker panel in here is technically a sub panel. So what we're looking at here is with the lights and the lights in here and stuff running in the barn, I'm using 107 watts up there. So you can see in the graph right there, when I had those fans on earlier, that's what you're seeing right here. And I'm going to show you what this thing does when, when we fire it up. And okay, I'm going to turn the kiln back on. So that's back on. You see that number jumped up to 500 watts. And as it is right now, you can see on here, I have everything turned off. So now what I'm going to do is show you the settings on this. Hit this select button. And now they're after probe one. This is, these are the moisture probes. And it's the same thing every time you go through here. It's the same order. So probe one, probe, probe two, I could turn two through four off, but I don't want to. So there's the dry bulb setting at 120, and the wet bulb is at 105, so I'm going to turn that down to 95. And final moisture content, I'm going to go down to six. Let's just see what that does. And wood group three, and that should take this right back. So you can see here with my probes, the moisture content, which was actually fairly close to what the, uh, what my, what's that thing called, a lignomet meter said. So that's where we are with this. So now I'm gonna fire up the compressor which that's not really going to do anything yet. Turn the heat on. And now, look what that thing says now, with just that heat kicking on. Yeah, it's pulling some serious juice. And I'll turn the vent on. I don't have uh, sprayers in there, so I'm not going to turn this humidification button on at all. So, what we have in here now is the temperatures that it's currently at. You can see it's 45 degrees in there, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little while for it to get up to a temperature where the, um, where the, the compressor actually kicks on. But what I'm going to do is, well, you can see it warming up in there already. It's doing something. It's warming up. I'm going to leave the fans off for a little bit, but I'm going to turn them on just so you can see what this energy usage does. There, there's everything running now. On a steady almost 7,000 watts. Now once that compressor kicks on that's going to shoot even higher. So we'll see what that does once the temperatures get up here. But I'm going to turn those fans back off because there's not really a need for them to be on yet until that thing gets warmer. So I'm going to on this video uh, this is going to be like a two or three day long video that I'm going to show you periodically through the day how the uh, how the drying process is going and or I might just 
I think I might just end this video here and do a separate video of the uh, no I'm going to have today on this video and I'm going to show you how this thing is uh, warming up through the day and uh, maybe like once every hour I'll come out here and give an update just through the day and that'll be the end of this video and the next few days I will uh, put out a video on the progress so I'll be back in about an hour all right guys back at it here's a look at it after an hour of running and I believe the temperature right at startup was right around 46 47 degrees something like that and the wood temperature itself was right at 40 degrees so uh, gone up about 10 degrees and while we're here uh, talking about this the moisture probes there probe one and three hey grace get out of the way one and three is in the red oak and two and four is in the white oak cats and now she wants to play <coughs> So I think it's amazing that they're both, all four saying about the same thing, but the red oak was measuring 24% and the white oak was at 19.8. So, I don't know. See you in an hour. All right guys, it's been another hour again. And that's where we are as far as temperature goes. Seems to me like that thing should have gone a bit higher than that by now. Um, I just went in there and checked it. The air blowing out the top just feels like it's just warm air. Like, okay, if warm air is coming out of there, how is it actually going to get up to 120 degrees? <clears throat> but I don't know. First time running this thing. We'll see if I'm having any issues with this I'll just give Niall a call and say hey this is what it's doing and they'll give me some ideas and help so there you have it thanks okay guys here's another update <clears throat> the last time I was out here it was at 1 30 <clears throat> and we had to go away and this thing hasn't been uh, doing a whole lot of climbing all that fast so it wasn't really a whole lot to show between then and now and now it is 6 30 so this has been five hours later and after that last uh, update on this I showed you I went ahead and turned the fans on and I believe at that temperature at that time I believe the temperature was at like 62 degrees so when it started circulating the air around it dropped it down to 55 degrees and I wound up calling Nile because uh, I went in there and checked it out and I was feeling the air coming out of the top of it and I was like, yeah, this air really isn't even all that warm. So I called him just to find out if that's a normal thing and he, he did say, yes, that's, that's normal. That's the way it will feel. It won't feel hot to you. So what I did was I took uh, a laser um, thermometer and uh, aimed it at the wood and I was very pleased because the wood temperature itself was at 60 degrees and earlier I had uh, measured it and it was, it was right around 45 degrees so it is heating up in there although it is slow but when you have that much wood in there at that temperature it's heating up a lot of stuff so believe that's why this is going so slow it's you know it's also a lot of space in there to heat up but that's what's going on now I'm going to give it a few more hours and give you another update okay guys here we are again it is quarter till 11 at night, and 
that's how far we've gotten in this amount of time here. So, still heating up. Um, and we'll come back in the morning and see how far she's gotten in and see if the compressor's kicked on at all. And I don't believe the compressor will kick on until that wet bulb reaches at least 95. And there you have it. See you in the morning. Hey guys. Well, it's morning. It's about 8.30. And we finally got up to temperature for the compressor to kick on. Broke 100 degrees, and I'm telling you what, I I got some leaks in here. Didn't really expect it, but you can see that wall up there is wet. And same thing, you can see the wall right there is, is wet. It, I'm getting humidity in this compartment over here, and... So I got some investigating to do today and try and figure out where this is coming from. Um, but other than that, this thing's doing its job. It'll get up to 103 and, uh, or I mean up, up to 120 and run there for the next two weeks. So I'll be checking back again probably about six hours and show you what we got then. Okay guys, it is now two o'clock. Um, you can see how my temperatures are going there and that my wet bulb is way too high. So I had been gone for a while and came back and I saw that, that it was so high this morning in the last little video bit there it was at 97 degrees it's set at 95 so it was higher than it should have been and I believe that might have been where some of my humidity issues were coming from in here plus I wasn't thinking about it but when I was working on this side of it I wasn't being so anal about uh, insulating this side so not thinking about that <clears throat> um, when this side heats up if it's there's any humidity at all and when it hits the, uh, the outside walls you can see there I got humidity on some electrical stuff up there need that to dry out um, but it was just everything that was against a cold surface which is what's behind that wall right there I have zero insulation behind that right there and that right there you can, you can see it's dry and I have insulation there so now earlier today um, you could see a, a line of moisture on the wall right there where the where the stud is and I mean I'm not saying that I don't have any uh, leakage from that wall coming in here and it's more likely around these doors and I'll give you proof to that right here yeah see that yeah I I didn't do a good enough job on sealing the door right here and I I already knew I was getting some moisture coming from this spot and I can actually feel it up there so well with that being said I'm it's it's going to work, it's just not going to be as efficient as if it were nice and super tight. But one of my other issues was my pea trap. And that's why that wet bulb is so high. My pea trap wasn't actually draining. And I believe what it was, was I didn't have enough of a slope going downhill on the on the line before it exits the kiln so it was building up water in that line and it wasn't enough inside the little trough in the uh, kiln component where it builds up water and then hits the drain and then goes out 
it was what it was doing was it was filling that thing up and then flowing overflowing onto the floor so I had a have a mess of water in there on the floor that it's got evaporated up again <clears throat> but I guess you'll have that so I got that p-trap situation resolved and I'll go out here now and show you I'm getting steady water coming out out the drain now and you can tell it's it's coming out a pretty good clip it does a good job of um, dehumidifying and pulling that water out of the air but that's a lot of water that's in the air up there so it's going to take a while for that to get down to the 95 so I'll keep you guys updated on what's going on here today and yeah, if you noticed I I backed it down two degrees to 118 just to get that heater to shut off until the humidity gets caught up inside there once it gets caught up I'll go ahead and crank that up at other two degrees and let her go there and uh, yeah right now just everything going on inside there it seems like it's maintaining right at that 118 mark so I, I think uh, you know a lot of times they say that that heater itself will only come on during the initial startup and the heat from the fans and the dehumidifier itself will be able to maintain the temperature in there so I guess we'll see about that and you know probably a lot of us I just got some leaks in there that I was going to, I was unaware of that I would have that issue but when it's an incredibly um, abrasive environment inside there with the humidity so high yeah I'll show you this here the very top one uh, the temperature says on this 117 and humidity 67 before I got the uh, p-trap situation resolved it was at 68 and yeah you walk inside there and it is instant sweat so there you have it I'll be back in a few and give you an update hey guys uh, another update here and you can see you know where my temps are <clears throat> and uh, the time right now is 530 so I'm thinking it's been about four hours from the last uh, input here and I've drained or collected off about six gallons of water that this thing has uh, drained off from the dehumidifying and uh, it's cruising right along and I'm so far pretty happy with it and also right now with the way this thing is operating it's just operating it just has the uh, dehumidifier on or there it says the compressor and five fans and in my area right now our electricity cost is 9.12 cents per kilowatt <clears throat> and my sense energy monitor is spitting out a figure of 41 cents an hour for operation costs based on just the compressor and the fans once the Let's see, when the compressor and the heater was running, the cost per hour was 81 cents. <clears throat> yeah, but I turned off that uh, heater and it's been maintaining that temperature here the whole time. So it's been doing good. And uh, there you have it. Okay guys, here we are again, and 
This is Sunday morning. I think it's the 5th of December. And uh, everything's cruising right along. <coughs> and on average, I'm actually getting a little better than a gallon per hour out of this thing. I dumped that thing empty at about 8 o'clock, and right now it is quarter after 11. So there's almost five gallons out of that thing and yeah this has been exactly 48 hours now <clears throat> I'll show you how I temporarily fixed my leak issue there it's like screw this I'm gonna spray that and uh, did a good job of sealing up the leaks around there I guess I uh, underestimated the power of that um, moisture coming out of this side because of all the pressure because of all the fans blowing over here but here's where we are as far as moisture goes and how the kilns running there so everything there says it's 18 percent then the average over here to the far right is 18.3 but I got to play with this and I discovered something. See, so if I go through here, hit the select, you can go in and you can turn on the different probes. So there, turn that one off, turn two off, turn three off, and let it time out for 10 seconds and it'll go back and it will give me the with the decimal the moisture reading for probe 4 so those others are flashing because they're turned off and yeah you know, all four of these only give you just the whole number so you can go through and turch uh, turn each individual one on or off and let's do 3 And uh, it'll give you the moisture for that probe down to the decimal. There, that one's 18.1. So I'm going to turn them all back on again. And everything is going nicely. When this started two days ago, the moisture on those probes said 20 and 21. And so I've gone down 3%. It basically started drying yesterday. So that's basically telling me it's lost 3% per day, which that's pretty good. And, uh, this dry bulb, I mean the wet bulb number up here, I'm believing is still so high because it was a mixed load. And the moisture is coming off of that maple and cherry at a much quicker rate than on the oak. And, uh, but it's doing good. And I'm going to end this video here and upload then whenever this load is done. I'll show you the load, show you the condition of the lumber, and if I get a chance, I'll show you my fixes on this uh, <clears throat> this door over here. But one of the other things I was thinking about is this vent right here. Is it doesn't it doesn't seal perfectly, and. I'm just not certain how much air is coming off of that thing. I brought a Kleenex out here to see if I can measure any kind of whether there's air blowing or not. But if, if it is, it's too minute for a Kleenex to show it. I'd have to use smoke or something. But since I sealed this door up right here, 
you can tell all this is drying off and yeah it definitely got some damage to stuff and it's no big deal I'll take care of it after this load is done but before I sealed that up this from that latch right there on down was just completely soaked and so I got her and yeah she's cruising right along see you on the next one